today's episode, I interview Ronaldo Webb. Ronaldo is the founder of Pet Plate, a dog food delivery service who provide personalized, fresh cooked, human grade meals for dogs. We talk about why personalized meal plans are important for dogs, the differences between kibble and fresh food, and how you can make the right food choices for your dog. I was also lucky enough to meet Ronaldo's dog, Cooper. Ronaldo, thank you very much for coming on the call today. No, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, so before we jump into the serious stuff about pet plate and personalized meal plans, I thought I just wanted to get a bit of a background about your history with dogs. So I know um, I just found out before the call that your dog Winston actually passed away last year. So I'm very sorry about that. Um, but you now have a new dog as well. So do you want to just tell me a little bit about Winston perhaps and, and your history with dogs? Yeah, of course. And, and uh, my new my new little guy is Cooper here, who's uh, <laughs> awesome. He's been fun, and you know now with the current climate and everyone working from home, he's been super happy and spent a lot of time with me. Uh, but you know, in terms of dogs, I had one when I was a little kid, uh, a black lab, I believe, named Alex. And then you know, as I got older and got out of college, I lived with a bunch of roommates that had dogs. Uh, so Alaskan Malamutes, other black labs, uh, you know, uh, uh, Shiba Inu, et cetera. And, you know, I've always enjoyed hanging out with them and just thought they added something magical to the, you know, this overall like experience of, you know, living in an apartment or roommates, et cetera. So, you know, it was always very natural for me to want one. And, you know, my fiance and I, uh, you know, are enjoying taking care of Cooper. But you know, in terms of like my own journey, like outside of, uh, really being a dog owner and getting involved in the pet industry. I was a consultant at a couple of large firms prior and they had some holdings across different pet companies. And I spent a lot of time as a operator helping out the leaders of these companies understand their products, improve their manufacturing capabilities, et cetera. And just spent a lot of time in pet food factories and saw, you know, really how the sausage is made for lack of a better term. And, mm. you know, that really led me on my own journey for, learning more about human grade pet food, fresh cooked pet food and what the benefits of that may be. Okay. Yeah, cool. So I think that answers the question about how you got into the, the dog food industry. Um, so quickly about Cooper, is there any fun, mm -hmm. what, what breed is Cooper? Sorry. You mentioned before the call. Uh, yeah. He's a mini Bernie doodle. Uh, okay. <laughs> so a Bernie found dog, miniature poodle, I believe Cooper's mom and dad were both mini Bernie Doodles, so okay. uh, he's, uh, I think they called that F2, but I'm not as familiar with uh, kind of all the breeding, breeding lingo. Okay. Is there anything, is there a fun fact about that breed that you, that someone wouldn't know? I mean, I hadn't actually heard of that breed prior to the call, so. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think it's kind of like a mini of the Doodles. They're very smart. He's hyperallergenic, which is great. Okay. Uh, you know, particularly we live in a small New York City apartment, so yeah. not a lot of fur everywhere. Uh, grooming is pretty important, so you know we actually consider that a nice bonding time with Cooper, um, as well as training and play to make sure he's fresh and doesn't get any knots. Uh, but we've enjoyed uh, you know that whole process, and I, said, I think the poodle mixes are very very smart. So teaching him tricks has also been very very fun. Oh, yeah. uh, Cooper is a little special in the sense that he's also uh, they call I think we call a phantom breed. So he has uh, very he's like basically chocolate, but he has a uh, other very light colors um, throughout like his uh, body and fur. So other like light variations of uh, of brown. So okay. that's been pretty fun. He has a really cute one on his butt. <laughs> okay, <that's laughs> we cool. always think that's funny <laughs> walking with uh, all of the people around the street notice that. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Cool. So let's jump into the more serious stuff then. Um, yeah. So Pet Plate, obviously, they you do you guys do personalized meal plans for for dog owners. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about why you think having a personalized meal plan is important for for a dog. Yeah, you know, I always thought it was weird uh, to go to a pet store and you just pick up a giant bag of kibble. And then you wonder how you need to feed your dog. You wonder if these are the right ingredients for your pet, et cetera, given their specific, you know, health needs and issues and lifestyle. So when I was thinking about Pet Plate, I really wanted to make sure that we were solving kind of needs and issues for our pet parents. And, you know, if you, you know, look at traditionally how it's done, 
you know, 60% of dogs are overweight or obese, you know, allergies are a real big issue. A lot of people are confused in terms of what's actually in their pet food. So we tried to address a lot of that. And luckily, some of that gets addressed through the personalization aspect. Uh, we personalize it based off of calories. Uh, there are probably other ways of doing it, but we think calories is probably the strongest. And, you know, based off of understanding a little bit of information about your pet, you know, it's easy then to understand how many calories they need. And then you can, you know, pre-portion the meal. Uh, you can also understand what allergies they may have and make sure those ingredients are not in the meal that are sent to them. So there are a ton of benefits that just make pet parents' lives easier and pets' lives better. And that's what we're about. Okay. So talk to me a bit about, um, I actually have, so I have a French bulldog which struggles with mm. allergies, uh, food allergies, yeah. environment, environmental allergies, yeah. all, all these things, right? Um, and we, yeah. we cook her food um ourselves um which is like a process but (laughs) um, (laughs) yeah that's how i started for my first dog winston we cooked for him you know it's uh it's a i I believe it brought us closer together you know maybe just been in my head but he enjoyed the food and it's a it's a fun process overall but you know we try to make it simpler for pet parents with our service pet plate yeah so i guess for me as an owner i had to i had to figure all that out of myself uh in terms of like you know, realizing the allergies are there and trying to figure out what she was allergic to, et cetera, et cetera. If, mm-hmm. um, what would, how would you recommend a new dog owner that um, was trying to pick the right ingredients for, for a personalized meal plan? Um, how, how, yeah, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, obviously most people get into looking at kind of the uh, current food and trying to find what they call a limited ingredient diet or elimination diet. But I think you first have to look historically at what you were feeding your pet over years and and look at, like, what are the major proteins they might have been getting? You know, what were the major ingredients? So definitely do a diagnostic exercise to understand what they may have been introduced to over time. And that can help you with the next step of the process, which is the elimination diet, right? And you can, you know, keep it very simple. If you're, you know, feeding kibble and et cetera, you can find limited ingredient diets. Obviously, if you're, you know, decide to home cook for your pet or find a fresh uh, cook delivery service, they use a much smaller subset of ingredients. So usually it's uh, very easy to get something that's complete and balanced that is a very limited ingredient in that aspect. And then it's a little bit of trial and error, right? Obviously, once you transition to your pups, you can then look to see, am I noticing as much scratching? Am I noticing as much rolling around and anxiety from them? And hopefully over time, over about one to two weeks, you can typically start to see um, allergy rooms. And, and I believe the time period you have to wait is about one to two weeks. But obviously, I think you have to talk to your vet to truly understand that. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the process I would think. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, you mentioned kibble a few times. Um, yep. Wh- what are the main differences, I guess, from an owner's perspective, like kibble versus mm-hmm. fre- fresh food? And, and why is that a big deal? Yeah, and I would actually break it up into three categories in, in that aspect. Okay. You know, you know kibble, um, and then in fresh pet food, you can have you know typical fresh pet food, or you can have human grade pet food. Okay. So, um, you know, I think the major difference with kibble is you know they're using what you call the four Ds: so dead, dying, disease, and disabled uh, meat, and it's not fit for human consumption. Um, the food is cooked to very, very high temperatures, and m- much of the protein isn't coming from you know, the, you know, chicken that may be on the label, et cetera, is coming from, you know, chicken meal, pea protein powder, and those types of things. So it's much less digestible and the metabolizable energy just really isn't there. You know, it's almost as if, you know, you're eating junk food versus a whole food diet. You know, what do you feel better on? I, you know, it's an uh, analogy that's used a lot, and I, I don't want to compare all kibble to junk food. But, you know, it, that, that um, analogy really does kind of stand. In general, whole foods are just more digestible and bioavailable than um, their counterparts that are have to be used in the process to make kibble. Then when you look at just a typical fresh food diet, it may or may not be human grade. And that's a question to ask the, manu- the uh, producers of that food. For example, Pet Plate is made at USDA facility. Uh, there are other fresh pet foods that are not and wouldn't qualify as human grade, and they still use pretty poor quality ingredients. But overall, those ingredients are easier to digest, et cetera. And, you know, as you move across that spectrum and you get closer to a company like Pet Plate or some of our competitors, you'll, you'll see that the quality of the ingredients is really the focus. 
we work very closely with veterinary nutritionists to ensure that they are balanced in the right ratios that are appropriate for dogs. And we try to have a couple different options. And, you know, it's easier to have uh, ingredient and meal variety in that sense than it is with kibble. Because unfortunately, kibble is a very small subset of ingredients and types of ingredients you need to use. You have more flexibility when you're just cooking real food and mixing it together appropriately for dogs. Yeah. Is it, does anything come down to the way it's prepared as well? or? Yeah, with with fresh uh, food, typically it's you know prepared in very similar similar ways. But you can look at is it a um, always fresh food or is it a, a a flash frozen food and shipped to you frozen? And then you have to think about how you're getting the food. If you're going to a grocery store and picking it up, you know it being refrigerated is, is probably okay. If it's being shipped to you, then you have to worry. Okay, was the cold chain kept the entire time, yeah. uh, etc. So there are some delivery aspects you need to look at in terms of fresh food. But I think you know we're a smaller subset of companies, and everyone's really doing um, I think a good job in terms of communicating with customers about what their food can do and the delivery process. And a lot of people have experience with that now as well from the human food side. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's been right. pretty yeah. funny when you look at human food trends versus pet food trends. Pet food is probably about five to ten years behind, depending on the mm-hmm. actual trend. Um, so it's exciting to kind of see the, uh, the analogs and how they kind of relate to each other. Yeah. Do you notice any common mistakes that owners are making when they're buying buying food for their dogs? Or mm-hmm. I think the most important thing is just reading the ingredient label and. Mm-hmm making sure you're comfortable with what's in there. You know, I'm not one of the you know big proponents of, oh, if you can't pronounce it, it must be bad. <laughs> There's a lot of things people can't pronounce that are probably just fine. Like a lot of like B, vitamin B6, we say vitamin B6, but I probably couldn't tell you the scientific name for it. And yeah. that's included in most dog foods. But, you know, are you comfortable with eating chicken meal? And where did that chicken meal come from? And what exactly is chicken meal? I think those are questions that parents should ask themselves when they're reading the label. Uh, and also, you should do the exact same with a fresh or human-grade pet food company as well and then make that decision. I think after that is, like, truly understanding how to feed this food to your dog. You know, again, I, I always talk it back to 60% of dogs are weight or obese. And that's just because people aren't reading feeding and feeding instructions, right? Or the feeding instructions on a bag of dog food are very uh, general, right? It may span 10, 15, 20 pounds for for the dog. And if your dog is supposed to be 20 pounds instead of 25 pounds, that's a huge difference if you're feeding them a little bit too much with a bag of dog food. So really asking your vet, you know, what's their specific caloric need? Like how many cups of food do they need to get and not eyeball it, you know, some of the personalized meal delivery services do the math and work for you, which I believe is great. But, you know, it's not to say you can't do that on your own. You just have to put the time and energy into do that. Yeah, so with Pet Plate, you're pre-portioned, right? All the meals or? Yeah. Exactly. We pre-portion all the meals based on your pet's daily caloric needs. So we do the math for you, working with our vet nutritionists to make sure we are understanding all of the pets uh, that are coming into our system. And we have a proprietary algorithm that's then Based off of that information, so breed, age, activity level, body condition, we can predict how many calories your pet needs. Cool. That's really good. Doing the science yeah. on it. Doing the science on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been fun. You know, I'm a, I studied physics in college. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I, enjoy the li- I enjoy the little bit of nerdy stuff I get to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so let, let's just pretend for a moment I'm a dog owner and I've been feeding my dog kibble for a period of time and I've started to... Yep become more educated about what is in the food and I'm looking for other options. Um, Mm -hmm. I've come to the conclusion that I want to get a a meal delivery service just to try it out and see if my dog likes the food and whether it's going to be, um, you know, beneficial to them. What, Mm -hmm. what should I be looking for? Uh, Because I know, I know there's obviously a few competitors on the market now, Pet Plate, one of the leaders initially, but um, I imagine there's, there's some discrepancies that I should be looking out for. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it's, it's actually very interesting because there are kind of things to look at. I think first it's the if it's human grade or not. If you're deciding to go with the meal delivery service, you're not going to be spending very much of a difference between people that aren't human grade and people that are human grade. And I believe the safety and quality you get from knowing your food for your pet was made at a USDA facility alongside human food with the proper you know, uh, the oversight and testing, et cetera, is worth it. 
if you don't do that, it can, you know, very pathogens, et cetera, you know, potentially could be there. You know, you've seen that in a couple of different industries. So I think looking for a fresh cooked human grade item is kind of what I look at first. Next, I will look to make sure they're working with a vet nutritionist and that they can speak about working with a vet nutritionist. Uh, it is very easy to design a pet food, but is it being designed with the uh, with the foresight of this is what can actually cause issues for dogs later in life, or this is what puppies really need? And you know, we should be working with, and we do work with a veterinary professional to make sure that we feel confident in the recommendations we're making to our pet parents. I think next, I would make sure that they're giving you something that's you know, pre-portioned or portioned in some way as manageable for you. Uh, you know, feeding your dog the right amount of food is particularly important. Being overweight can take away two years from their life. You know, being underweight, that's no fun. <laughs> uh, so you want to make sure you're feeding, uh, feeding the right amount. I would also look at their dedication to sustainability. Mm. You know, in ordering products, I think it's very important for everyone to do, you know, or to try to do their bit um, to make sure we're taking care of the planet, uh, companies as well as people. So make sure that, you know, you're not just throwing away random plastics, et cetera, et cetera, that they've thought through that in the uh, product that they're shipping to you. I think, you know, your footprint is very important. So I think those are kind of, you know, four quick basics to, yeah. to look at. From there, obviously, you can get in terms of price and, you know, what brand you feel represents you and your pups the best. Uh, you know, those are some personal preferences, but if you stick to those first four I mentioned to you, you will probably make a good decision. So when you say human grade, I could... I could literally taste. Mm. Have you tasted the food yourself? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I eat the food all the time. Uh, it's, it's so funny when we do R and D test runs, etc. Uh, you know, we have the food sent in from our manufacturer. We lay it out, and me and our COO and CEO, etc. We'll all get around and we'll taste and be like, okay, yeah, this actually tastes pretty good. <laughs> now, obviously, what tastes good for a human is very, very different than what yeah. tastes good for a dog, etc. And we're not recommending you eat that place. <laughs> but it, it does speak to, you know, our confidence and the safety and quality of our product. Yeah. And, you know, theoretically, we could eat this food for a very long period of time. I don't think most people that are making kibble would eat that food for an extended period of time. No. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can listeners find out more about you and Pet Plate? Where should they go? Yeah, well, you know, I think the first best place to head to is our website, www.petplate.com. You can find out a ton of information on uh, myself, how I started Pet Plate, and why I started Pet Plate, as well as information about our veterinary nutritionists and all of our food. It's a really simple, easy checkout process. And if you have any questions, you can just shoot us an email. And we have a great team of uh, pet care professionals that are looking forward to answering any questions you may have. Perfect. Well, thanks very much, uh, Ronaldo. That was really, really great information there for the listeners about personalized meal plans. No, thank you so much. I think you're doing great service helping get the word out to pet parents that they have other options outside of what they may find at the typical pet food store. Great.